What's up YouTube? And today this video is going to be all about what kind of job you can expect to get if you've got or are looking at getting a working holiday visa for Australia. Now first off I want to start by saying all of these jobs I'm about to talk about I've actually done myself. So I spent two years in Australia and hands down it was the best two years of my life. i done some jobs like uh, working on a banana farm, uh, worked in a hatchery for a pearling company, worked out at sea on boats for a pearling company, worked as a chef, was driving combine harvesters and done a few other odd jobs. So if you're in Australia and you're looking for job ideas and you've got a working holiday visa and if you are looking at getting a working holiday visa, pause this video, go and get a working holiday visa right now because you will not regret it. So stick around and if you do find value in this video, I'd really appreciate it if you can like and subscribe. So stay tuned. Okay, so let's get to it. So first off, I'm gonna start talking about the banana farms. So these are located mainly in far north Queensland, near Cairns. And there's two main towns, which one is called Tully, the other one is called Innisfail. Now I worked in Innisfail for my um, banana farm work. And I was what you'd call a banana farm humper. I was one of the humpers, which meant you would go up to the bunch of bananas that were ready on the tree, you would sort of pull them down to your shoulder, and then someone behind you would come and cut them with a machete. You would walk them back to the trailer where your colleagues would grab the bunch off of you and stack them onto a trailer which is pulled along by a tractor. And we would rotate that, we'd be on the trailer, then we'd be doing the carrying. It was a very, very long day. Um, long days and really it was raining all the time as far as I remember. I did injure my leg quite bad actually and had to go to the hospital and put my leg in a spleen um, and the kind of way I personally got treated them, especially that, that group I was working with um, was quite poor with that particular farm anyway. Um, but yeah very very intense days but it does depend what kind of job you do because some people will have a better experience. There was um, there's a shed workers which would be sorting the bananas and packing the bananas so it does really depend on where you end up that's what I end up doing most of the most of the girls were being were working in the shed um, but yeah it, it was different experience for everyone so everything I'm about to say is based on my experience so how these banana farms tend to operate in terms of getting you work is that the hostels in the town nine times out of ten they're going to be working hostels which will have a connection to the actual farm so the people managing the hostel will have a relationship with the local farmers and they will work on demand on getting you work now what I did seem to happen with a lot of people not just me was that I'd called up in advance to say can I please you know I'm looking to come here is there any work going I was promised yes if you arrive on the 19th for example there'll be work for the next day for you to start now this didn't happen and I waited about two and a half weeks and you kind of fall into a trap which a lot of people did was that you get there you're paying rent to stay there and you're just waiting around because there's not much else to do in these places unless you've got a car so I'm kind of just wait, waiting around hoping me to get a job and a lot of people unlike me left it last minute to get this farm work to get a three months cover to get a second year visa so warning as well don't leave your farm work to the last minute because if this situation happens to you you get very stressed out and then you're rushing around trying to find a job or someone to sign you off to say you've worked three months so that's word of warning so yes i waited two and a half about two and a half weeks before i got a job and then i say i got a job as a banana farm humper but then the job was not consistent at all i was there for about a month and the amount of time I worked was probably no more than two weeks because it was kind of, you know, you'd be waiting, promised promise five days a week. I was doing two, three if I was lucky. And all the while paying for this rent um, to live in this hostel, which was a working hostel. People were working, people were waiting to work and everyone was, it was fun because we were with, you know, a, a load of backpackers having fun in a hostel. But um, it wasn't ideal because people were running out of money. <laughs> people were waiting around for this work. People were stressed because they were trying to get their three months in. But that, that was my experience. And I know that this is the case as well for other people I've met that have done similar work to this. So just be wary of that kind of work with a banana farm. It was a good experience. Um, 
but it wasn't for me. I left after that month and I went off somewhere else to go and get my three months because it wasn't really viable and wasn't really much to do. I was getting a bit fed up with getting messed around. But that was a hostel called the Walkabout Hostel in Innisfail. They're probably not all the same and we're probably not all managed the same as that, but that was my experience. So just be wary and if you are going to do that, don't leave it to the last minute. Don't make sure you've got four months left. Wait, you know, halfway through your visa. If you really like it, which you will, um, go ahead, go and get your second year visa. Go and work on three months worth of farm work. It's easy enough. So just, just, just don't stress about it because you can actually do that amongst different um, lo different locations, so two jobs, um, more, than, more, than, more than two jobs, as long as you've done three months of a farm work, doesn't matter how many different companies you've worked for. So in terms of pay for this job, it does depend what you're doing, and I guess it depends what farm as well, but um, you can get anywhere from $24 an hour to a $27.5 an hour. I was on $26.5 an hour, I think that's mainly because I was doing a banana farm humping, which was one of the more intense jobs. So it paid a little bit more than the people working in the sheds, um, but not not a great deal difference. Um, so that's that, but it's really not one to make money on, especially if you're just, because all you really need is your three months visa. I mean, have fun, do it for a, a month if you want to. If you, you might love it, do it for three months, but um, I didn't get the consistency of work I wanted to do. I didn't want to stay around there. I would have been there for six months if I stayed around with the kind of work I was getting. So. That sort of thing you want to look at, but it's not a real money maker unless you're lucky enough to get seven days a week and you just work at it for three months. So I'll put all the names of the locations in the description below and also I'll put some links there uh, for you for the backpacker job boards and um, also point out some of the hostels which will be working hostels so you do need to call them up, find out what the situation is with work, go there and then just be mindful about everything I've just said. So on to the next one. So this next one ties in really nicely following on from a banana farm. Reason being is I actually really hurt my leg when I was on a banana farm and needed to have it in a splint for about a week and a half. So I had a car in Innisfail and I sold that car and I was thinking I need to fly somewhere else and get another job and get this farm work done. So I had a friend who I knew was living in a really remote place in Western Australia called Peringery, a tiny little town. And she was going through a whole sponsorship thing and we, we met in Darwin and then kept in touch. And um, I was basically just running it by her, so this is a situation. And she said, oh, I, know, I know a farmer who's actually looking for someone and he's going to do a season and he's got um, X amount of hectares with a contract in the Wheat Belt, which is in Western Australia, to harvest the grain. So he had two combine harvesters a tractor and a big chaser bin, which are the bins that would carry all of the grain the combine harvesters would empty into as they're driving along. So um, she set me up with him, I had a phone call with him and he was really keen, he said look it's happening, it's going to be about three, four weeks, you can come over and um, I'll teach you everything you need to know and I was honest, I said I don't have any experience in driving tractors, combine harvesters, any of that sort of stuff. He was really chilled and um, really nice guy, his name was Daryl. So anyway, so next thing you know, I fly over to Pringery, get there, meet him, and it's uh, it's actually quite far away. It's it was very central Australia, um, in the in the Southern Cross. So that's where we would we were basically working. So it was me and an Italian guy as well, he was a backpacker, um, and Daryl and he rented out a little cottage. So it was very remote and um, the work begun and it was a bit of a roller coaster. So just explaining this whole backstory so you can kind of get a feel if you haven't gone yet, this is the kind of way you can just make things work for you. So I needed to get my three months anyway, so I was quite keen to get on with this and I knew it would be intense because we were there to work. We didn't have anything else to do. We were literally in a cottage in the middle of nowhere. So the work started, it was really, really hot, but he was teaching me how to use the tractors, teaching me how to use the combine harvesters, and um, yeah, every day was about 13 hour days. Um, we didn't really solidly agree on price, um, but he was just saying, I'll sort you out at the end, I'll sort you out at the end. And to be honest, it was it was really good experience, he was really nice, and we just had good fun as well. So um, that was a bit of a that was a bit of a roller coaster with that job and 
really intense heat, very long days, um, but the food was covered, he would pay for the food, um, accommodation was covered, so everything I was going to earn was, was done, and I learned so much about combine harvesters, how to fix combine harvesters, how to change the, um, the belts on them, how to change the blades, um, how to drive chaser bin, it was, it was a really cool experience. So I'd done this job for about five weeks, and at the end of it, he said to me, I normally pay my guys about 1500 a week. Are you happy with that? And of course I was over the moon. So for me, I think it was about 7,500 Australian dollars, which is brilliant because that allowed me to keep traveling. I spent a month in Sydney uh, with a friend who flew out from the UK to meet me. So I had that time. I had another month of just traveling all over the place. So um, that was a really cool opportunity to earn a fair, quite a bit of money in a short amount of time as well, considering I had no experience. So these things do just happen in Australia, believe me. So at the end of it, he also signed the paperwork, saying that I had done five weeks of work with him. So that classes as your farm work again, three months towards it, and um, I was that much closer to getting my second year visa. So this next one, if you've heard of it, you've probably really wanted the job, or you were lucky enough to get the job. So this is the pearling industry in Australia. This is the coolest job ever because it's nothing like I'm going to get in the UK. You're basically out at sea, you're working on a boat with a bunch of backpackers, um, you will essentially be a deckhand, but it's great fun, great experience and pays well because all your food's covered as well. So this, um, this kind of job, um, as I say, you're probably going to end up as a backpacker, end up being a deckhand for the company. But it doesn't mean you get to spend your 10 days out at sea, three days back on land and rotating like that. It does vary depending on season and what company you're going to work for, but that's the kind of gist of it. So if you're not familiar with the term pearling, it refers to the pearls as in the pearls that you'd get for jewellery and the pearl oyster. So the oyster is the thing that you'll mainly be looking after. So they would be out at sea and they'll be hanging on lines in panels and the main jobs will be there'll be a small, smaller boats um, where they would collect those um, oysters and those panels. They would bring them back to the mothership, and then people on the mothership would be cleaning those um, barnacles off and any dirt off of the oysters, and then putting them back in to their pockets and sending them back out to the lines again. So that is the main rotation of the day, and you'll be doing that a lot. There'll be a few variations of that job on the boat and you'll be sleeping on the boat, as I say, 10 days at a time, and then back on land. But here's a cool job, really intense work, quite long hours. So you could be working from um, five to six in the morning till six in the evening, seven in the evening. Um, it, is a, it is a long day, but you get your evenings to yourself. We used to fish, so we used to catch cool things like um, Spanish mackerel, so we have huge Spanish mackerel and then we would cook them up, the chef would cook them. Um, we saw whale sharks one evening off the back of a boat. Um, really cool and everyone's kind of, you know, in the evening it's just really relaxed, everyone's chilled and you're hanging around with um, people your same age and, and same interests and yeah, it, it's brilliant. So how to get a job in the pearling industry? Well, there are a few companies in Australia, I'll put all the links in the description below. One of the ones I first tried to apply for was Pass Bailey Pearls, which is one of the bigger ones that's located in Darwin. So I went into their head office in Darwin, um, filled out some paperwork and didn't really hear anything for two weeks. I was getting a bit bored of Darwin, I wanted to carry on do something else, it seemed like I wasn't going to get a job. I knew that there was quite a waiting list for these jobs because obviously they pay well. You know, you don't you get your food covered on the boat and all sorts. So um, a lot of backpackers wanted it for experience as well. So I waited around for two weeks. I then made the decision to drive back to Cairns and that was a very long drive. And when I arrived in Cairns, of course, I got a phone call saying, do you want the job? Are you, are you in Darwin? And I unfortunately had to turn it down. I wasn't going to be here in time. So anyway, a few months later, um, I saw an advert as well in uh, on Gumtree, I believe. And um, it was for another um, pearling company called Clipper Pearls. But this job wasn't for the deckhand, it was for a hatchery, which I didn't really know much about. I had a quick Google and it's essentially where they were spawning the oysters in a lab. And um, yeah, basically that's all I knew. So I said, yeah, I'd love this job. I wasn't anywhere near 
um, broom at all, which is where the office was. I just said I'll be there the next day. I was in Geraldton, which was a flight away. Luckily, I managed to hitchhike and then get a flight to Broome and showed up the next day. They drove me about two and a half hours to this remote location and that's where I spent eight months. Um, really remote, me and two other people. When I arrived, I thought there would be lots of backpackers there, but no, it was me and two other people. Um, they were both marine biologists and essentially every day we were growing microalgae, we were spawning oysters. But luckily enough, it ended up being a really, really good situation for me because not only was the accommodation free and the food was paid for, I wasn't spending a penny. So it was really, really good for that. Um, the, the pay wasn't brilliant. It was, I think it was $24 an hour, um, 24 25 But it didn't really matter because I wasn't spending anything anyway. And it was just the coolest place. We had a boat, um, a, a car we could just drive around the location with. It was all on Aboriginal land. Um, that hatchery is no longer there, I've actually moved to Darwin for that. Um, but I think that was a very niche job to get. But if you can try and apply for one like that, I'd definitely recommend it, it was really cool. But with that came the opportunity to then go out to the boats. So I used to go out on the boat with the people from the hatchery. We used to do it for two reasons. One was because hatchery season would close down and we would just add to the deckhand staff. And the other reason was to go on and choose some brood stock, which would be the ones we would grab. So we'd go on the boat for, for a trip, or half a trip, five days, um, sex the oysters, um, chip some of the oysters for load for tracking, and then we would just bring them back to the hatchery to spawn. So I had a bit of a mixed experience of that. The good thing was that I kind of got treated, unfortunately, a bit better than the people that were the deck hands on the boat because my manager was the manager from the hatchery and um, the people on the, on the boat were under a lot more pressure than I was and I don't know if they had the same experience in terms of the managers treating them too good but I think everyone just made, made do and it was, it was good fun. We had music on most of the days when I was on the boat, everyone was working away, chatting. It was, it was a cool environment and um, a good opportunity. Now the pay for the boat I think was around about $27 an hour, 28 It was really good. Um, and you're doing kind of 10 to 13 hour days as well, 10 days at a time, so um, that does pay as well. Now this next one is a kitchen hand or a chef. Now this one's a nice easy one because you don't have to have any experience if you're gonna be a kitchen hand. Um, especially the other thing as well, if you've got experience making um, coffee as a barista, um, you should definitely get a course before you go traveling anyway. Well, that's something I really want to do because you can find some really cool cafes in the middle of amazing locations and if you're a barista you can probably just get a job in the barista just chilling for a month, two months, three months, enjoy um, that side. So uh, Kitchen Hands, again this place I found in Broome, um, I was getting paid $25 an hour, we agreed cash and of course I paid all of my tax for that in Australia and um, so that, that was the kitchen hand side of it and I actually ended up becoming a bit of a chef. Now I had qualifications in the UK anyway, um, had an experience so I kind of worked my way within a month doing the kitchen hand, um, cleaning up the pots um, and then uh, into the kitchen doing the breakfasts and the lunch and the prepping of food and it was really really chilled atmosphere, um, nice place and I think these are really easy jobs just to get some cash quickly as well although you don't get like the other jobs like the farming work, um, purling stuff, you won't get your accommodation and food paid for, but um, sometimes you get some free food, that's cool, but uh, yeah, it's good to save a bit of cash and you'll be in a town um, not so remote if that's more your thing. So in terms of pay, I think you're going to be looking if you're a pot wash, um, anywhere between kind of 24 to 27 an hour, dollars an hour, um, if you're a chef, I'm guessing 35, probably up to 40 as well an hour. Depends on where you are. Um, I know Melbourne's got a massive uh, scene there for for chefs, um, all sorts of stuff, huge food food scene there. So if that's what you're into, probably especially bartending as well, probably head to Melbourne. But any of the main cities, um, again, what you get paid depends. Restaurant depends, location. 
So in terms of links in the description, I'll put some niche ones in which I've mentioned before. I'll also put some generic ones which are, are really handy as well, like Gumtree, Backpacker Job Board, um, Facebook as well. You've got to go on Facebook, join these, um, join these groups on Facebook and really help you out. They see people posting all the time, looking for work, looking for work, and people responding as well. So um, that's really easy just to get work there. And also in hostels, keep an eye, because some of the hostels have boards, job boards. And if you get up early, and if you're in a place where that's regularly cycled, I found that locals come in for you know really easy, really easy tasks, just some labouring work. But you got to get up very early because a lot of people look at this job board in the morning, and they're up before you, they'll get their job. And these locals, I know for a fact, in a number of places, uh, Townsville, I remember, someone came in, said they wanted about a week's worth of labouring work. It was a man um, who I phoned him up went around his house and it was basically cleaning up a garden, painting a wall and I was there for a week doing odd jobs and it was really chilled. He pretty much just brought me um, beers at lunch, we sat at lunch having a beer and he sent me home early but paid me a full day. Some people are, are really really cool to work with as well so you will get some of those cool jobs. So thanks for watching and I really hope this video helped you out. And if it has been beneficial, please like and subscribe. And also, if you've already done jobs in Australia on your working holiday visa, I'd love to hear them in the comments below. So until next time, safe journeys.